Hello and welcome. My name is Tadej Blažić and today I will be talking to you about soft bodies in Blender 2.82. Now, soft bodies can be a bit difficult to work with sometimes due to their problems with collisions, with planes, with backgrounds, and today we'll be talking about how to solve those problems in a practical application. We'll be making a looping animation. Basically, we'll be using a couple of spheres, some collision objects, let's say a cylinder and a plane, and we'll try to iron out any details for that animation. This is going to be extremely useful to both beginners and more intermediate users who can sometimes have some issues with soft bodies in Blender. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to open up Blender 2.82, I'm going to select everything in the scene and delete it. We start with a fresh, clean slate. I'm going to add a cylinder. This is going to be my main tube. I'm going to scale it on the Z axis, like so. And I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab, selecting the top and the bottom faces and inserting them to about a thickness of, I think it's 0.06, should work fine. I'm going to search for bridge edge loops and I'm going to click on that option. That's going to create a empty cylinder for me, like so. I'm going to press Control A to reset the scale and in edit mode, I'm going to select all of the vertices, all of the faces in the cylinder, press Control N and recalculate the normals. Now that I have my cylinder, I'm just going to rename it to collision, let's say collision one. So this is going to be the first collision object. Now I'm going to create the second collision object and the sphere. So I'm going to just add a circle. This is going to be my circle here. Go into top view, move it to the right, select edge selection and press F to create a face. I'm going to extrude this plane up slightly, select everything, control N again to recalculate the normals, and I'm going to press shift control alt C to origin to geometry. So I set my origin to the geometry of the object. Next thing, I'm going to create the ball that's going to be bouncing off our collision objects. Control 2 to get a subdivision of 2. Let's see if it fits inside of our cylinder. Maybe we can scale it up slightly, like so. Control A to reset the scale, and I'm going to move it here to the right. Front view, so I can see a bit better what I'm doing. I'm going to move it up, so it's going to be affected by gravity. Before I do anything else, in my modifier tab on the right, I'll be adding a cast modifier with a factor of one. Now I'm doing this because with soft bodies, the less vertices you have, the more stable or rather less computationally demanding your animation will be. So I'm just going to apply these. So I get this. Select everything, control N, control A for scale again. So we, we're making sure that everything is to scale. Everything will be working perfectly. Now I can start with my physics. So with physics, I'm going to first select the plane. I'm going to put a collision on the plane. We will be touching these settings over here on our right, the soft body and cloth settings. But before we do that, we need to put a soft body on our sphere. Press soft body, uncheck the goal and press play. And you can see that it's not working properly. Now this happens because we still have to go through a couple of settings to set everything up correctly. I'm going to shorten the length of the actual loop so I can see a bit better what's happening and I'm going to expand the edges. Now, one thing you could do is also play with the self collision, but in this case, we want a, let's say sort of a rigid soft body animation. So it's better to work with the edges in this case. I'm going to increase the bending amount to five, and you can already see that we have a nice animation going on. So you can see that it's actually bouncing off nicely from our platform. It is a bit wobbly, so you can also increase the bending much more so you can get rid of those wrinkles. The push and the pull are basically telling you what's happening with the compression of your ball. But as you can see, we have increased those settings and we have a issue. 
the ball is actually clipping through our collision plane. Now this is to be expected in Blender. So I'm going to select my collision plane over here and I'm going to play with these settings. I will be dragging the inner to about 0.5. We are trying to find a threshold where our soft body isn't clipping with the plane because that is usually the main problem with this. We can lower the outer to 0.05 like so and we can again try and find the best threshold for our inner like so. Perfect. Now that we have this working we can move on. I will also modulate the mass of our ball so I'm going to make it to be 0.3 kilos so when it's bouncing it has a much stiffer feeling to it. You can leave it at one, you can do whatever you want. Right here we just solved the problem that's very common in Blender. So now I have to do the same thing with the cylinder so I'll be just adding a collision and I'll try and copy the settings from my plane to the actual cylinder object. Now that I have everything I can start working on my loop. So I'll be pressing shift A, camera, camera. So I'm adding a camera to the scene. Control Alt 0 so I set up the camera. I'll be making an Instagram post with this so I'm going to go into my layout options over here and I'm going to drag the resolution to be 180 by 180 which usually performs pretty well on Instagram. I'm going to select my camera again I'll be using the autographic mode so you can see that I'll be cutting the top and the bottom part of my cylinder. I'm going to drag it down so I can see that it's dead center. You can also help yourself with the composition guides so you can find the center or if you want to work in thirds that's usually very useful. We can move it so it's right in the center like so. Perfect. Now that we have this we can start managing our animation. Let's go into front view and let's position our object. This is going to be actually our hatch of sorts. So what we'll be doing is we'll be making three different balls that fall into the tube and then fall out of the tube. So first thing in order to move it correctly I'll be just selecting the bottom loop of my cylinder, shift s cursor to select it, I'll select my plane and then I'll just shift s selection to cursor so I have it clipping directly in my cylinder like so. I'll do the same with my ball so I'm going to press shift s selection to cursor. G, Z so I can move it up and now before I do anything else to this scene I want to make three balls that will be responding to each other. Problem is if I duplicate this as it is now the balls won't be interacting with each other because we have to set a separate collision on the actual soft body balls. So I'm just going to press collision, shift D and then duplicate those three balls. I can also rotate them to have a more variegated bouncing option. Now if we want to see what's happening inside of our tube we just select our cylinder go into our object properties and the viewport display instead of texture select wire like so. Press play and let's see what happens. So our balls are bouncing nicely inside of our tube and off of our hatch. Now we have to make this into a looping animation. I will extend the end of our animation to be about 150 frames. So I'm scrubbing the animation to see where the balls actually stop and actually start to simmer down and when they start to do that let's say at about frame 100 I'm just going to select my plane down here I'm going to press the keyframe option and rotate however if I rotate you can see that it's going to intersect with our ball we don't want that so I'm going to go into side view edit mode vertex select and I'll be selecting the top two vertices. Shift S cursor to select it, Shift Control Alt C origin to 3D cursor and now if I rotate it you can see that the hatch opens downwards like we want to. 
So I'm just going to press R to set a rotation keyframe there, move it a couple of frames to let's say about 125, rotate it by 90 degrees so it opens up completely. Let's see what happens now. So we can see the balls are still bouncing and they're falling down. Maybe we can do the, maybe we can put the opening a bit earlier. So I'm just gonna move it by a couple of frames to frame 95. Let's see how that does. It's no problem if you have a bit of open space, you can always shorten the frames like so. Perfect. So at 150, we can see that the last ball, at about a frame 150, the last ball leaves. Let's see the first frame. So at frame 17, the first ball starts to creep up into our view. Let's zoom in. We can see that it's still not inside. So I'm just going to move it to frame 18. And this is going to be our starting frame. In order for these to start there, we have to bake all of these into our cache. So simulation start is going to be one. I'm going to put the end at 150 and I'm going to bake all dynamics. So I have to scrum through all of these spheres, set the end of my simulation to be 150 frames. So this is going to calculate to 150 frames like so. Perfect. Bake all dynamics. And now since we have our dynamics baked, I can set it to start at 117 scrub to the end of our animation to about frame 148 and that's going to be the end. If you want to see a bit clearer because we have a bit of transparency you can select your camera and you can select the pass part 2 opacity and you can drop it to 1. So you're just seeing what's happening in the camera view. Now let's press play, they bounce off, opens, fall down, bounce down so we have a continuous loop perfect to finish off the modeling and the animation part of this loop i'm just going to add a couple of finishing touches i'm going to be adding a subdivision modifier of two to all of these bones you don't have to worry because first of all the animations are baked but also they are after the soft body and collision modifiers or physics rather so basically, you won't be having any computational problems at this point. For our cylinder part, I'll be just adding a bevel modifier, very simple. Offset, set it to 0 0.0901, 0 increase the segments to 2 and put it to angle. And now if I add a subdivision surface, it's going to follow nicely. Again, we don't need to do this part. If you want this part to be visible, you can do it, but just showing you how you can do this stuff. For our main cylinder, my, our, for our main collision cylinder, we can do the same, bevel, put two segments, offset to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, set it to angle, and then add the subdivision modifier. Shade smooth, and we can also, again, change the display from wire to textured, so we're seeing a bit better what's happening. We can increase the viewport to two if that's bothering you. Let's say maybe tighten up those edges, but that's perfectly fine. I'll change back to I'll change back to the wire display because I want to add another thing to my animation. Now I have these balls and they fall down here and they are cut off by the camera slightly. So I can either move my camera down, but we have our hatch exposed like so. Now I want to do one last thing here and it's actually just looking and scrubbing through the camera view to see how my balls are interacting. So this is the lowest point where the balls fall. However, the top point is still covered, which is at about, let's say, here's 67, 66, about there. So I'm just going to select my camera and I'm going to increase the autographic scale to better suit the top of my ball. I'm going to move it up slightly on the z-axis and we get this. So we have all of our three balls in view. Now, the thing is, if you are bothered by that hatch, 
I can add, let's say, another cylinder. So now we have that hatch opening down there. So you can either leave it as this and add a glass shader to your cylinder, but if you want it covered, no problem. Control A, add a cylinder again, and I'm going to scale it by pressing S, Shift, Z, and then increasing that size on the X and Y axis. Edit mode, select the top and bottom face, Inset those faces to be touching, let's say, about here, so that they touch with the class enclosure, and bridge edge loops again. We can then just shift select our cylinder, our main cylinder, control L, and copy the modifiers. W to shade smooth, control A to reset the scale, and now we have this guy over here. You can move it down so it's basically covering the bottom, Shift D to duplicate it and move it on the Z axis upwards. And we have this. So they congregate, they fall down, and the loop repeats. So that's basically it. In this tutorial, we learned how to set up our soft bodies, we learned how to manage any errors that come our way, how to make soft bodies interact between each other, and how to make a continuous loop with our soft bodies. Hopefully you've learned something from this tutorial and hopefully you'll try it on your own. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.